Today is Saturday, March 12th, 2022. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the listener feedback show for Survivor 42, week one. Week one, it has begun. <laughs> you did that good. Oh, thank you. That deep voice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, I'm excited to dive in. Here at Survivor Fans Podcast, we do two episodes a week. Joanne and I recap the episode right after we watch it. Almost immediately. Sometimes we have to rewatch little little bits and pieces. Well, I have to gather the data too. Joanne does have to write down what everyone says verbatim for next time on Survivor. So that That's does take not some what extra I'm time. About. I'm talking what oh, I, what oh, okay. I do for JSFL. Oh oh, pulling your stats side together. Challenge. Pulling some stats uh-huh. together real quick. Yeah. Nice little lightweight task. That would be it. <laughs> And then on Saturday, we hand the reins of the show over to the other super fans. It's your turn to weigh in on what you thought about the episode, your evaluation of the castaways, how you think the season is measuring up, and uh, who's doing good, who you're enjoying, who surprised you, who disappointed you. There was a lot of that. And what what you're looking forward to next how many folks did we have check in 16 for week one all right good stuff is there anything we need to cover before we get it rolling i don't think so let's jump right in rolling 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 keep them doggies rolling there you go all right first up we got a call from pete hey joanne and stacy this is pete from boss calling here. Now, despite Probst's is insane, sick rantics, what a monster, this and that, blah, 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 I've seen way worse going back to Survivor Africa. That was a monster. This is whatever, with which is 26 days. But I'm going to let out a great big And man, I did not see that coming with the Jackson. But I send my respect, though. Man, with the lithium. Because I have a brother who, with his bipolar, takes lithium. So I know what it's like with anxiety and having issues like that. But I can only imagine what poor Jackson was going through. It's a shame that that happened, especially on the premiere episode. I hope he's doing well. And I had mad respect for even trying to go out there. He didn't have a chance. Choice. But on to some of the other players, guys. Rock story almost reminded me I'm a Frank. I know that's random from Good way reference. back in Survivor Africa, yep. being demanding and bossy and rubbing his tribe mates, especially the young ones, the wrong way. But he was a beast in challenges, and he is the strongest at, at, on that team. So they, they, it would be silly to get rid of him. Tory, I think, dodged a big bullet. I, I have high hopes for Tory, like you did. Stace, you know, I hope that she can work her social game a little more. We'll see. She got to get uh, work her way back. And Drea, I hope I'm wrong about her, but I'm, I'm thinking she she somewhat is remi- reminds me of a Shan from last season, based on some of her comments, this and that, and how she was talking with Tori. But I don't know. I could be wrong. And from what I saw in the next dawn, so we'll see. And then Jonathan on that orange team there, man, he may not be much of a strategic player, but man, that guy was a force in the challenges. Pushing his way in the boat there, and then carrying the, the chest. I give props to him there. That orange team really came together, especially after Jackson left, and I liked Marianne. I was a little worried for her, but I loved her enthusiasm and hearing her story. And then Hi, I like Ty and Olivia. They seem okay on that green team, too. But let me get into Zach, guys. Zach was a super fan, but I don't think he fit well with the game. He struggled with the puzzle, and he was the weakest of the team there. He almost reminds me of an Adam, who was, I know, a winner way back in Millennials and Gen X, because based on what I saw his face there, 
Yeah. But you know what, though? Hey, he was a super fan. He went out graciously. He tried the in the dark uh, twist there, but it was to no avail. Went out unanimously. Probes, get rid of these advantages, especially in the dark. It's useless. This, these beware advantages. I'm worried that might be useless like it was in season 41. We'll see. Go back to some basic survivor stuff like the 39 days next season. Because we're choked. The Million Dollar Island is coming next year. And that is going to be epic on NBC. Can't wait for that. But here we go, though. This was an awesome premiere. Love this cast. Can't wait for episode two. Woo! Whoa. Thanks, Pete. I like that reference to Frank. Certainly, Rox Roy does seem to be that grumpy old man archetype. <laughs> Going all the way back to the very first one with BB. Same way. Grumpy, trying to tell the younger ones what to do. Uh, annoyed because they didn't do what he commanded. Mm -hmm. Who's another one? Uh, certainly Frank in Africa, like Pete was talking about. Chicken from China, another classic yeah, baby. example. Baby was kind of like that. He was the, yeah, he, he set the mold. And certainly, <laughs> yeah, it just seems like Rox Roy's headed for the same fate. Although I think Chicken went out first in China. At Swati's he annoyed age, him so much. if he had told me to go wash my shoes, yeah, I would have never washed them. Yeah, just to spite him. Mm -hmm. And I would have <laughs> just to see if you could get him to boil over. Put him where he sleeps or something. <laughs> Un like, under the shelter, right where he me? is. <laughs> you might be oh, a sorry. father, but you're not my father. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid I wouldn't have taken well to that in my youth. Yeah, just how he delivered it just seemed very disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it did. Entitled. It's one thing to say, oh, could, you know, wow, your shoes look like that. There's other ways of doing it. Sure. It'll be better for you if your shoes will last yeah, longer. We, if We, or re it, it we really need to keep our feet clean yeah. out here because, you know, we don't want to have any issues. Or There's so many keep other it to ways. yourself. Yeah. But he can't seem to yeah, keep that, his mouth to closed. To me, he's, that would, would, it wouldn't have he's gone having over to well. chime in. All right. And Thanks, uh, I, I would have thought you'd reference Skinny Ryan. Certainly, that seems one of the most apropos references for Zach and, and Romeo. Yeah. You remember Skinny Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Pete. Next up, we got a call from Robert. Hey, Joanne, Stacy, and Survivor fans. This is Robert calling from Canada with my listener feedback. It's season 42 and the monster is back. <laughs> That's right, my friends. The monster is back. And considering the fake blood in Amulet, I think it's either a werewolf or maybe Frankenstein. Seriously, Jeff, <laughs> did you film this That's season good. after Halloween? I had high hopes for high this season, but after seeing him choose to cover himself in blood while having no visible wounds, I have to question his decision making. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was just trying to make Jeff happy, or maybe he thought, well, I'm only on Survivor once, I might as well go all out. So anyway, like most of you imagine, I wasn't thrilled with the new Amulet twist, but I don't think it'll amount to very much in the game like some of the other twists that they brought out. They keep saying how the season's getting tougher and tougher, and I feel like the toughest part is actually understanding the implications of all these new twists that they're coming out with. There I thought the episode overall was pretty good, but two hours definitely didn't feel like long enough. So much of the episode actually felt like a precursor to the actual season, and it was a bit frustrating to see so much time spent on Jackson when they aren't going to actually participate in the game. And that's not to say I didn't find their backstory emotional. It's just that, you know, it would have been great to be able to learn a bit more about some of the other castaways like Chanel that didn't get featured very much. Mm -hmm. My USB Drea, I thought she had a pretty good episode, but damn, her and Roxroy have some serious attitudes. I think that she's got the athletic ability and the smarts to do well in the game, but I worry that she's going to rub some people the wrong way. So we'll see what happens. On a positive note, I think we have a great cast for this season, and it feels like we have a good mix of different personalities, some very strong-willed and maybe even abrasive and some very lighthearted and genuine. I love Marianne's persona. She's so genuine and happy, and her smile is infectious. I also enjoy watching Aquaman. Uh, I mean, uh, Jonathan, him putting his physicality on display. I hope when he broke the record for pull-ups, by the way, that he wasn't the one doing the counting. Anyway, next week on Survivor, <laughs> Marianne continues to push the Survivor Halloween mm. theme by giving her very best impression of Jason Voorhees with a machete. I look forward to next week and can't wait to hear what everyone else thought of this episode. Thanks. <laughs> Good one, Robert. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Good job. Next up, we got an email from Jack. 
This was a nice episode to start the new season, even though there were some unfortunate things that happened in it. The preview for the season they showed at the beginning of the episode told me that Tori was going to be safe for at least a few episodes mm -hmm. because of the secret phrases beware advantage. I questioned Lydia's first confession when she complained about being out there. I think she will do well, though. The new advantage sounds somewhat neat, but I'm not sure how that will play out. The injury to Daniel wasn't as bad as it could be, but I can see it being a problem down the line. I hope not, though. When looking at the triangle puzzle, I was trying to solve it as well, as, as well and my initial total was eight. <laughs> I don't think I would ever have gotten 50 different ones, though. Or 51, the correct yeah. answer. <laughs> I think Roxroy could be problematic and bossy, but he seems good for now. It's unfortunate to see Jackson go out that way, but I don't know why he lied to medical about his lithium problem. The immunity idol is looking really cool this year. When it comes to the other castaways, I'm actually really enjoying Marianne, and I look forward to seeing what is to come this season. All right, thanks, Jack. Yeah, it was interesting. In one of the, there were two extra videos. One, Jackson gets caught by Jonathan searching for an idol and another one where Lindsay was talking about how awesome Jonathan is. <laughs> and in the, uh, the one where Jackson got caught on day one hunting for an idol, we see Jonathan, Marianne, and Omar make, well, they called it a pack, but it sounded like an alliance to me. Mm -hmm. It so looked like they, it. They bonded over it. Bumps yeah, and everything. So in terms we'll of see. keeping an eye on Jackson for doing his idol hunting. Well, but now they don't have him to go after, so... Hmm. Well, and then they did, in that extra clip, they did the classic thing where the camera quickly shows you where he was indeed right. Jackson's, yeah, yeah. his hunch was right. There was a something there. It was probably the beware advantage, because I, I think that's going to come back up this um, this episode. Yeah, I really was looking forward to seeing him play. I, I was disappointed, but... Yeah. Oh, well, it is a common is, theme, as I say. Yes, blue is blue, one is one. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, like Jack was saying, they did give it away that Tori was seen reading a Beware Advantage. Yeah. So what does that tell us? Well, that she wasn't going home that episode probably. Well, she could have gotten it later in the episode, but she didn't. So. It's also telling us Tori's going to lose her vote. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think that's a bigger takeaway. So yeah. it, somebody's going to be finding Beware Advantages. It may be her in this in uh, week two episode. Well, but since I was kind of disappointed in her gameplay, I don't care. <laughs> okay, we'll move on from there. I was so, so sold good, on her in the beginning. Good eyes, Jack. There was a couple of other um hints or clues I, I can't say that's necessarily a spoiler because it's in the episode well yeah but they so. do show you two other people in a challenge that we haven't seen oh, okay so well usually though those things might be a, 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 a minor spoiler but they they're not often uh, usually it's they don't show much but just the first few episodes so yeah, the, and uh, U.S. Survivors had, they've, they've got a long history of spoiling things where you can see people, it'll be in, used to be in the intro clips, they would give stuff away all the time, but it was never more for like three episodes, three or four episodes out. Mm -hmm. I was stunned when we were watching Australian Survivor, and it was, we didn't see it until like the 12th episode, like halfway through the season, I think. That was the longest I'd ever seen something be spoiled in the intro montage mm. that deep into the game. You're I, like, well, that person ain't going anywhere. I usually don't hold on to that information for oh. very long. I don't know. For some reason, my brain I can't just, let, let go of it once yeah, I see it. You do, but I usually just forget about it. And then when it comes up, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, even... I'd, <laughs> so what's worse for me <laughs> or even funnier about me is that 
I knew that about Tori. We had seen it. It was in the preview for season 42 that yeah, we watched at the end of 41 Absolutely. where she's reading that. And yet I was still kind of wondering, hey, is it, are they going to vote her out or are they going to vote Zach out? I get too. so sucked totally in by forgot. the edit that I forget that I know these things. <laughs> oh, well. Well, Good that's deal. what I mean. I, that, that goes out of my head. and mm-hmm. I get caught up in things and I don't remember it anyway. <laughs> yep. Thanks again, Jack. Next up, we got a call from Boother. Hi, Joanne and Stacy, and all you Survivor fans. This is Boother checking in. I love this first episode of season 42. Started off great, but before we get into the episode, I just have to compliment Drew on his singing in the Javik Part 2. <laughs> it was delightful. I hope you lose again, Drew. And next time, <laughs> add the Drew's crew for vocal backgrounds. That would be wonderful. Well, Wonderful. getting to the show, <laughs> I do not like the advantage amulet. It's not an advantage. Basically, it's going to pit the people who have that amulet against each other if they get to the merge. Next, on the Ica tribe, I'm very impressed with Drea, her skills, her strategy, the way she handles herself. However, I thought Tori would play better. So ho- hopefully she'll ramp things up in the next a uh, few weeks. On the Taku tribe, Jonathan and Lindsay are strong challenge beasts. So they're going to carry yeah. their tribe through these physical challenges. <clears throat> and Marianne, wow, her smile just carries you away. She's got a sanguine personality and it's just fun, fun to be with. So lucky to be on her tribe. On the Vati tribe, Mike and Jenny look strong and smart. I'm very impressed with how they're playing so far. But I'm worried about Daniel. That dislocated shoulder looks like it's hurting and he needs to take it easy. He's gonna have a tough time with Survivor being such a physical game. So that's it for now. Looking forward to what everybody else has to say. Bye. Thanks, Boother. Next up, we got a call from Drew. Hey, Joanna Stacy. Hey, everyone. This is Drew. Okay, so who's not in the basement? Who got the first vote out point? Who's in the attic? That's right. Not in the basement. I'm happy to be up in the attic with Jeremiah. Like I said on Facebook, on the group. Yeah, that actually came as a big surprise to me. I thank you to anyone who mentioned Zach going first in the, the Jabbik part two because I really had no idea. And I mean, I kind of went back and forth with a couple of people that I had just kind of gotten that mud from but yeah i'm i need to i accept the the placement so far we'll see how long i can maintain that yeah it was actually a good premiere i i i enjoyed most of it i do like this cast i mean i'm maybe i'm kind of used to the quote twist or as of course we like to call them gimmicks but it's just so many like just so many and some of them are next level up so i don't know but it, it is looking promising and my girl Terea is looking awesome next time on survivors trying to make me think no no she's not she's fine she's not going anywhere she's in a great place she's playing hard but not in your face i'm just gonna go ahead and drop the loser of the week and that is rock Story. what he he does not understand people he doesn't know people he doesn't know how to talk to people how unaware can you be about how you come across about how people respond to different cues and motivation and just just terrible 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 showing from rock Story on the first episode winner of the week i'm gonna give it to actually i mean obviously the, the loser you guess would be zach or uh you, certain you know who but the winner of the week i'm gonna go ahead and give that to marianne because i just think i think she's a she's a bit much she's a bit extra as the kids these days say but i also think that she is just i don't know there's an energy obviously and i think that that could that could be i mean it could go either way but at this point i think it's a good thing to have on there you know what when speaking of jackson when she she needs to cool it okay that was way that was an extreme reaction Mm -hmm. the wailing and the weeping it's like he was dying or something but no as for jackson i'm gonna maybe i'll give him like honorary loser of the season because that was just just bad bad showing for jackson so yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that but sorry not sorry goodbye (laughs) this season is gonna be fun and i'm again happy to be where i'm at and i actually got julie to to join back in with jsfl so that's gonna be fun she has tori i have drea their usbs and yeah i mean i did announce with much excitement that i on the facebook group that i actually remembered to put in my picks i mean i had an hour to spare 
I did pretty good. I think I did pretty good. Let's just be clapping out of me. Okay, I um, just finished listening to your recap. It was great. I was stuck in traffic, so thank you for helping me get through that. Please pray that I don't run out of gas because I don't think I have enough credit limit on my credit card to pay for it before I get home. I might be walking to work tomorrow. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. All right. Thanks, Drew. We hope you're not working to work. Walking, walking. to work. Yeah. Working to work. Was that I topped off my tank on Monday? Was it Monday or Sunday? It wasn't Sunday. It was Monday. Yeah, because I got a heads up that there might be some cyber activity coming out of Russia that could be disruptive. And then, so I went to fill up the tank, and uh, it was five dollars and thirty nine cents per gallon here. And then it went up again the next day. Well, to, and the next day I went over to top mine off. And they had it completely roped off and just said, nope, keep, yeah. keep going. For some reason, the station was mo- closed. Mo- I yeah. don't. We never they did find out what was going on. all the way on, around right? it. And yeah. All the, uh, that's where I always get gas. Yeah. We get a discount there mm. from Rayleigh's. <laughs> Come on, people. But I, don't, I haven't been anywhere, so I don't know if they've opened back up or what's going on. Yeah. No, but the guy... Well, it's all just a scam anyway from Big Oil, so... Yeah. Okay, well, we don't need to get into that. No, so. no. Let's keep it moving. Moving right along. Thanks, Drew. Good job, buddy. Next up, we got an email from Tyler in Utah. Well, there goes my USB, and wouldn't you know it, I switched from Tory to Zach about 48 hours before oh. the premiere, and I had Roxroy as my vote-out choice. That was really not how I wanted the episode to go. I loved Zach and decided I wanted to be able to cheer for my winner pick, and I really identified with the archetype Zach fits on the show. I was pumped to watch him play and live vicariously through him. Well, here's hoping that the smart, smaller male super fan going out first will lower my threat level if I ever make it out there. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't just breeze past Jackson's departure either. So much happened. I feel like they made the best of the two-hour episode. I guess that's easier when you don't have to do two tribal councils. Yeah, definitely. Jackson was just awesome. I can't say any more or less than just that. Okay, rapid-fire thoughts in my head. Amulet key advantage thing. Awesome. Love the idea of it gaining power if you're able to be patient. Marianne is so jiffable. Indeed. Omar, I think he said the exact same thing on the show that I've been hearing from him for a month in all of his pregame interviews, and I'm bored with the bird analogies already. <laughs> but yeah, but what about his hand up the rhino's butt? That's got to be thrilling. Okay. Getting to hear that over and over. Yeah, thanks, honey. He came up with the one line, and he's using it. Mm-hmm. I think Daniel and Zach feel a very similar archetype. I'm very interested to see if Daniel's age and maturity will make a big difference for him. I work as a photo stylist, so I work with creative directors like Jenny, and am not one bit surprised to see her have full confidence in that triangle puzzle. Lastly, I feel a little miffed about much of the Tribal Council actually being anticlimactic. The only important thing was whether or not the shot in the dark worked. Side note, if the shot in the dark had worked, does everyone just re-vote but Zach's safe? Since there were no other votes, that was what we that concluded. Was our yeah. assumption, yes. I've seen a lot, and I believe he confirmed that in his interview mm-hmm. on uh, EW. Is that- I've seen, yeah, I've seen a lot of people point out on Twitter that Tori was reading the Beware Advantage in the opening minutes of the episode, so she wasn't going home. But even before that, Drea doesn't know if she has a vote, so the best she can hope for going into tribal is a 3 3 or 3 2 vote still against Zach. So, of course, she's not going to risk it this early. If she does have a vote, they could have tried for Drea. Zach. And Zach and Romeo's vote for Tori. Roxroy and Swati vote for Zach. But that only works if they'd gotten Tori to throw away her vote somehow. It just would have been too much to hope Drea was her vote and then could have already had a 3-2-1 vote at the first tribal. If you stopped and thought about it, the numbers were never there for Zach. The second Roxroy and Swathi said his name because he wasn't going to work with Tori now. I don't know if that last paragraph makes sense. Glad to be back and glad Survivor's back. Thanks for all you do, Joanna Stacy. Thank you, Tyler. I think we followed you. Next up, we got a call from David. Hey, Joanna Stacy. It's David in Pittsburgh. Well, I 
have to say I had a longer walk with my dog this morning because I was listening to your podcast. And you were going over the at least 12 intros right at the beginning of the episode. And honestly, I couldn't believe it. I kept listening to it thinking, did we watch two separate episodes? (laughs) I only remembered about three of those intros. All the rest flew over my head. I went back and watched it again today, and I I have no idea what I was doing while I was watching the beginning. I must have been fooling around with my chart and figuring out which team was which and and my contestant and where my safe picks were and everything. It really went over my head. And I have to say that it's always good to go back and watch the show a second time. For example, I picked up that time that they showed Tori reading that goofy clue where you have to make a statement like Mm -hmm. goats on AstroTurf. And in seeing that, and it didn't happen in the episode, we would have known that by the end with the tribal council that she was not going to be eliminated. But I didn't catch it the first time. It was only the second time and going back over it that I, I saw it. Like it seems half of your listeners, we are all voting for the same JSFL candidate, which is high. And I'm becoming more of a fan of him already in the first episode. I love the scene with the three, Lindsay, Drea, and and High were throwing mud, blood, sand all over each other. And I missed his comment the first time, but what he said, uh, he said, I've been on such a strict skincare routine. Mm-hmm. It just had me laughing. So that, that first episode had everything, drama, tears, laughter. A couple of people that have surprised me, Romeo was one of them. He was listed as a beauty pageant coach, and the last beauty pageant coach that I remember on Survivor was Chet, who I keep trying to wipe his uh, name (laughs) and face from my memory book. But anyway, so luckily, Romeo is not at all like Chet. As for Zach, I was surprised he was voted out. He had that skinny guy's alliance. I think he broke it when he went and talked to Tori. I don't know why he would ever do that with the get out running it past uh, Romeo beforehand. But I think if he had played the game a few days longer, he could have settled into it and gone much deeper into the game. And I see my time is up, so I'm going out back to dig up some mud for my daily facial. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Good deal. Thanks, David. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana, and I really liked this episode, which was a surprise, because I didn't know if I would. But I thought it was a really fun premiere, and it had, like, you know, some emotional moments and stuff, which I appreciate. But it also had, uh, like, you know, fun moments, which I also appreciate. Like, I like a good balance of both, you know? Don't like just, like my somber everybody hates each other seasons <laughs> i i like the i like the fun seasons um but uh but yeah it, it was you know it was kind of similar to the 41 premiere but they changed some things up to make it make it different like you know we actually got the the puzzle instead of just the sweat challenge again which they changed that probably because they wanted them to do the puzzle (laughs) just to get something different because why would you just isolate one person like (laughs) that's awful but yeah that that was that was fun to to, fun to watch them uh struggle through through the puzzle i'm not claiming i would be any good at it but you know it was fun to watch and and just that opening challenge thing with the whole mud smearing and stuff (laughs) that was so so ridiculous and just over the top and it was just it was so funny (laughs) high smearing the fake blood on his chest for no reason (sighs) but unfortunately the uh the vote off uh was was sad i picked uh lydia to go just because all the the promotional stuff uh, all the clips on youtube that they showed were of the blue tribe so i'm like that's weird maybe they're gonna be a more focal point because they go to travel second the first tribe is gets a little less screen time i don't know so i was like okay well who from another tribe do i see going first lydia because she seemed kind of annoying in the preview which i i stand by that (laughs) yeah i i did not did not take into account that the challenge would get changed because of uh 
of Jackson leave, leaving early, which that whole situation is unfortunate. I'm sure a lot of people are going to talk about it, and I've seen a lot of tweets and stuff about it, and, you know, some people are angry at CBS, some people are angry at Jackson, just, yeah, whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff. I think, I don't know, it's unfortunate. It sucks that, you know, he didn't get to actually play, but he also just you know, brought it on himself, so. <laughs> but the vote out, that's what really sucked for me, because I knew, I knew Zach was too overhyped, but oh man, once he started giving those confessionals, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this kid. Because, uh, you know, he reminds myself of me, and so I was just like, please don't go first, please don't go first. And then, and then he did, and it sucked. And it hurt worse because Tori is just so annoying. And I know some people are gonna love Tori uh, because you know, people are saying like, oh, she kind of reminds me of Angelina from Dave vs. Goliath. And you know, some people love Angelina, some people like me hate Angelina. So, you know, it's, it's whatever, but <laughs> poor, poor Zach, it sucks. But yeah, that's all I got. I will see you guys next time. Thanks, Parker. Next up, we got an email from Jill in the Outback. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. I'm so far behind that I thought I'd just do a quick email to get some feedback in. I watched the first episode, but haven't really been able to study and devour it all like normal. I didn't get to listen to the Jabex and only just caught a couple of contestant videos on Instagram. And the only one I really took notice of was Marianne. First reaction was she would be such fun to watch, but I think if I had to spend five minutes with her, I'd be ready to tap out. (laughs) Jackson, I don't know. He tried to be a bit too clever, and it didn't work his way. And I'm thinking that Survivor is so desperate to be inclusive and diverse Mm -hmm. that they thought with the lack of an alternative, they'd put him in the game and see what happens. I bet there was a bit of face palming when he spent... 10 hours being dizzy so early in the game and then scrambling to get him out. I think Jeff was much calmer than he was probably feeling. I made desperate last-minute choices in JSFL, and it didn't work out well for me. But I did take a stab in the dark and got high for my USB. Very nice. I'm, so I'm happy with that so far. Okay, I will try harder this week to catch up and try to learn who is who. It's great to be back. Happy days, everyone. All right. Thanks, Jill. Up next, we have a call from Noelle. Good morning, everyone. It's Noelle calling from Albuquerque, although technically I'm in Bernalillo today. I did not find this first episode super riveting. A lot of it was repetition from last season, I thought. It kind of felt like a bad dream because all the same stuff from last season was happening, but then it was different people making different choices. So it's it's kind of like how a dream distorts reality felt like to me. Although it was really interesting to see different decisions play out. That was pretty cool. But I kind of wish the challenges hadn't been so similar. I mean, it was almost a carbon copy of the first episode of last season. The only thing that's different is that there were different people making different choices. Obviously that pretend you went through a challenge and put mud and blood on yourself thing was new but I'm not sure how much I liked that anyway my USB Drea had a great episode I thought Mm -hmm. although that one third advantage which is super confusing to me I didn't even bother to learn how it worked but it sounded more like a disadvantage it sounded more like a huge target if you have to get the other two people out so that you can use this advantage Um, that was pretty crazy right off the bat Roxroy surprised me I thought his attitude sucked I thought that it was Survivor 101 to not appoint yourself as the boss of the tribe on day one so i was pretty frustrated when romeo refused to vote for him just based on his size because drea said that he didn't even do that good in the challenge so why are we pretending that he's good at challenges just because of how he looks on the outside but it's all right they didn't vote him out i'm sure he'll get better nothing to say about swathy i should have something to say about tori considering that she almost got voted out but i don't I picked her as a vote out, so I was disappointed. I'm sad to see Zach go because he really made me laugh, and I thought that he might be uh, one of those narrators who's always making us laugh. And so I think it will suck not having him around. I hope somebody else can make us laugh in their confessionals. Really, really sad to see Jackson go. I think that's going to be a huge loss for us, the viewers, and will be felt throughout the season. That's really 
disappointing that he couldn't stay on and I hope he gets another chance someday because he I think it would be great to have on Survivor. Jonathan came off more friendly than I expected. I guess I was kind of thinking he might be a little egotistical and maybe he is but I didn't see it in that episode. Didn't see much of Lindsay or Mariah. Marianne we got a lot of her personality. I hope that doesn't mean that she's leaving soon. Omar again still on the fence with him. I want to like him but there's something there that I guess is um still a question mark for me. Chanel I don't remember seeing much of Chanel. I I when I heard that a lot of people chose her, I also was confused, Stacey. I didn't, I didn't see what everybody else is seeing, so I hope I get to see it. Daniel came off super uh, friendly. Uh, what a good sport. I, I liked him better than I thought I would. I liked Hi better than I thought I would, but again, I'm very ambivalent towards him, so I'll be watching him carefully, I guess. I liked Jenny's episode. She came off really smart and level-headed, cool, calm, collected. Lydia I was very impressed with because she was so observant. And I wonder if that's going to come into play later down the road. And I don't have anything to say about Mike because I don't feel like he got a lot of play in this past episode. And I'm way over time. So I hope everybody has a great weekend. Bye. All right. Thanks, Thanks Noel. Noel. Uh, that reminds me that we messed that up in the, in the um, recap show. You said Lydia. I thought um, Lindsay. And I was talking about Lindsay. And you were talking about... And I didn't even catch it till I was doing the quality check after and heard you say, oh, wait a minute, he said Lindsay. No, I said Lydia. I meant Lydia. <laughs> I said Lindsay. You did it again. <laughs> well, what can I say? Oh. Uh, we, we talked. Sorry, everybody. We, uh, we messed that up a little bit. I don't even remember exactly what you're referring to, but anyway, I it's doubt it was that important. important. Yeah. No. I think maybe people are leaning towards Chanel because she's got that title of executive recruiter, but that just does nothing for me because most executives that I've come across aren't anything special to begin with. No, I kind of liked her bios. And I don't like, I, I don't know how someone who hasn't been an executive can be a good executive recruiter. I don't know. She just looks too young for, to be executive recruiting. Mr. Old Man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grumpy old man archetype now, just like Roxroy. <laughs> and I wanted to thank Noelle for the heads up. She was right. I was wrong. Tori has been notorious viewing all that crud on Facebook. So that was a good heads up to move along from Tori <laughs> and focus on another castaway. So thank you, Noelle. Next up, we got a call from Jody. Hey, Survivor family, it's Jody. I have completely fallen off the wagon and approaching this season like a hundred percent casual. I'm actually starting to watch the first episode right now. I've not seen anything. I haven't even looked at the beautiful roster. I'm sure it's beautiful, but I haven't looked at it. I neglected to pick a USB. Crap. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I missed putting in pics. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, so I feel represented. There's a girl who's talking about instantly burning and hating sand and being crap at everything. Not that she's going to win, but I would have probably picked her because hilarious. I'm on the show. Oh my god, I love Marianne's face and her pants. I want those pants. Okay, first challenge. I don't understand why they have to be bleeding and filthy. <laughs> I don't understand. Can't you just say it was a long run? We ran for ages. Oh, that's good. This doesn't make any sense. Now you have to separately make up some kind of convoluted story about what happened and there was a thing and fake blood? Why? You're clearly going to be getting back and you're not bleeding from anywhere, but this... <sighs> oh my god, Jonathan's a boost! Ooh, so it looks like Roxroy's tolerance is low. Okay, um, if I had to have this information at the beginning, I'd put him first out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing it right now. Seriously, dad on vacation, fun police vibes. My lord. Halfway in, I like everybody. They're all so great. Ah, and Skinny Boy goes home. Ooh, that was a lot. Okay, I'm caught up. Now it's time to go back and listen to the jabby. Okay, I'm in. All right, bye. All right. Thanks, Jody. Good to hear from you. Next up, we got a call from Jade. Hi, Joanne and Stacey and Survivor fans. This is Jade. Just Jade. 
from Hawaii. Aloha. Christine is traveling. Hopefully next week she'll be back to give her feedback. But this week it's just me. But Christine, my mom, does have some thoughts that she texted me. So I will share both of our thoughts. My USB is high and I really liked him from just looking at his photo and reading about him. But then he comes in and then he just smears like fake blood all over himself and I just did not think that that was a wise move. I thought that would be very suspicious. And then he's aligning with his other tribe mate who, I'm sorry, I don't remember everyone's name yet, but she's the one who doesn't like sand. And I just think that's probably Lydia. not the best idea. So I'm hoping that he builds a larger alliance with more people, or at least with different people. <laughs> that's my hope. Mom's USB is Omar, and she thinks that mm -hmm. he is a puzzle genius like Erica, so she thinks he'll do well. I guess we'll see. We both really like Mike now. When we first saw him, we thought he had kind of Phil Shepard vibes, something about his face. We thought he might be a little yep. crazy, but we like him. We would like to do without the saggy underpants, though. Mike was given us saggy underpants <laughs> vibes. We didn't love it. We are kind of hoping Jeff will bring back the bathing suits at some point. Hopefully he'll listen to the crowd and bring those back because we are tired of seeing them in their underwear. We like Mary Ann and we both really don't like Tori. I have a theory about this. I think she said that she wanted to come in and kind of mirror other people in order to make them like her and trust her. But I, I don't think that's going very well for her. I think that people can mm -hmm. tell when she's inauthentic and they don't like that. They, they're they put off by that. And I certainly, as a viewer, when I see her mirroring other people, I think, oh, it's, it makes me cringe. It makes me feel like she's being very fake. And so if I can tell that, I feel like they can, the other players can definitely tell yeah. that. Uh, so I had her as my vote out point. This this episode, we'll see. Hopefully next time she'll get voted out because definitely that tribe is going to lose again. Mom and I both agree that Jonathan's tribe will probably always win, just like Blue Team did last season. And this time that other tribe, I think it might be the Blue Tribe, might always lose. We'll see. But we are both loving this season already. It's just, it's great to have Survivor back. And I look forward to hearing what you all think and what all the other survivors think. And I have one quick question. Why did the green team not sit out Daniel? He was obviously favoring his shoulder. He was obviously injured. He wasn't really helping with the paddling. He wasn't helping with the pulling and pushing of the boat. Why didn't they sit him out? That's my question. Hopefully you can provide an answer for me. Until then, we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Jade. That's a very good question. We actually did... Uh... Uh, we didn't. I don't think we talked about it in the recap show, but we've talked about it since. And um, just because you were so upset, you're like, like, why, why is he Lydia paddling with his bad arm? Why is he doing it? Well, why wouldn't he have at least got on the other, other side, side of the it, boat? Yeah, he may not have had an opportunity in all the rush and the fuss. Well, yeah, I, I guess he thought he would be stronger anyway, but really. Uh, and she said she can't swim, so um, yeah. In her list of things that she does that not she like or cannot do, do she doesn't like swimming. Singing, seemed to be there, so that's yeah. the best we got. So yeah, I I guess that's why that that then why did they need her? <laughs> I'm I'm with you, Jade. Mike was uh, rocking the droopy drawers a little bit there, and that's I, gonna get old quick. <laughs> I did not notice. <laughs> yeah, it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> he had that uh, full diaper kind of thing going a little bit. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thanks, Jade. Look forward to hearing, hearing you and Christina again next week. Next up, we've got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, it was a good premiere with an interesting, diverse cast and a few Macters. Hopefully the producers didn't and have... And few Macters. Oh, and few Macters. Okay. That's true. The only one that's kind of there is Lydia, right? She's the only one with that aspiration, I guess, actor-wise. The producers didn't have big move-itis when they created this season's twist. Here are, are my other observations. Jeff seems unduly stoked that some of season 41's twists now have their own twists. Omar once stuck his hand up a rhino's butt. After that, nothing phases you. Team physical challenges should be easy for Jonathan. He's used to lifting himself up while carrying dead weight on his back. Ah, nice. 
Omar wants to look like a pigeon but play like an owl, he might be a dead duck. <laughs> <laughs> or a lame emu. Listening to Lydia's nervous motor mouth intro, I'm hoping she has an off switch. <laughs> I bet her tribe mates are too. Zach idolizes Adam Klein. He should have imitated his gameplay and not his voice. <laughs> That's good. Zach's voice was really hard. Ooh. Marianne has so much energy. She should come with control rods. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan looks like the Incredible Hulk. He should have been on the Green Tribe. <laughs> that would have been perfect, wouldn't it? <laughs> and he could have yeah. tied Romeo to him for a challenge and yeah. drug him like Chet. Oh, that, my goodness. That was, oh. Yeah. At least they didn't wow, do that. Wow, flashback. Well, not yet. Yeah. Who knows what could happen no, with a swap. No, that was bad But enough. Romeo has no illusions about who and what he is like Chet did. You remember Chet said that he was most like Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see Chet doing his dive, <sighs> where to dive, he stepped forward with his arms straight out <laughs> and just sank. Because that was what he could do as far okay. as a Ozzy dive. Oh. You mean shelters don't magically build themselves in a 90-second montage? Shocker. I predict that the tri-amulets will play out like spy versus spy versus spy. Pinky swear, be darned. Survivor rules. If someone asks if you're in, say yes. If you're given fake blood, say no. Daniel and I have something in common. We both saw a Dr. Ray for a popped-out shoulder. Ah. Funny how having a big lead in the physical part of a challenge doesn't ensure victory. Yeah, it does seem to happen a lot. I can't imagine having Tori for a therapist. <laughs> That's true. Her lack of self-awareness must be really hard on her patients. Ugh. Ika eked out a victory in the first challenge. The producers wanted to see Savvy so much. I'm surprised Sweat didn't require using a thimble. Yeah. Ex-fireman Mike makes fires. Maybe he should list his profession as fire starter. Papa Roxroy is strict. When someone slacks at camp, he makes them build a corner and stand in it. <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if Jackson is in breach of contract for the stunt he pulled. That yeah, um, could be true. Yeah, I can't imagine that he's not and was not in breach of contract. They were just so stoked to have him on there though, that they probably let it slide. The Skinny Guys Alliance chances of staying together were slim to none. But um <laughs> Oh, what a stinker. Tori has resting lemon face. Hey, Julia. Drea and Marianne should be glad an adult accompanied them to Shipwheel Island. No kidding. When It did feel like that, didn't it? When the Dream Team demoed the immunity challenge, I'm betting they had teams of six and not five. The physical portion was painful to watch. Ooh, that is a, that's a fantastic point. Hmm. That they were expecting to have at least one more person's physical ability to help with all that. Adam Klein was sole survivor. His fanboy, Zach, was the first unanimous vote off. Next time, Marianne channels the Amico chimps with her machete while Swathi and Tori target Drea. Will Mike lose the game after getting lost in the jungle? Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. I can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for making us laugh. Next up, we got a call from Jeremiah. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. Hello, SFP listeners. Jeremiah here with some feedback for our first episode of season 42. And overall, big two-hour episode and i really enjoyed it i thought it was a pretty solid episode i thought the editors did a little bit better job than they did with the premiere of 41 and not making it felt like the episode was overwhelmed too much with all the twists which we still had a lot of twists but you know it just didn't feel as overwhelming i don't know why that is but it just seemed that way to me okay so this for this analyst twist i i will say I like the concept of it where you're forcing players to work together, but then they may have to churn on each other to make the reward even greater. But I do agree with you guys. It does seem a little too complicated. The other thing I wanted to mention was the fake blood part. Guys, I laughed my butt off when I saw that because I had the same thought that 
Rob Sassinito had was, I think that that was Survivor producers trolling with these players to see if they'd mm. be dumb enough to smother their bodies in what seemed to be fake blood. How stupid was that? And they can't even use the excuse that they were tired and everything because they had just begun the game. Right. Just like the start of nearly every season of Survivor, there was definitely some players that I had a change of heart after seeing them play and seeing them on television. On the Green Tribe, I had a much positive response to Daniel. I wanted to like Daniel, but I was afraid he'd be too awkward. But I think he's going to be okay. And I also had a better feeling about Mike. I think Mike might turn out to be much better than I thought as well, although I still don't think either one of these two will win. On the Orange Tribe, didn't have too much of a change of feelings other than I was reassured that I do like Omar and Marianne from that tribe. As for the Ica, the Blue Tribe, the Hot Mess Tribe, <laughs> I was surprised and disappointed to see how bad Ruxroy and Zach is at the game. Ah, poor Zach. Good grief. What a disaster that turned out to be. He obviously is just too young and not prepared to play the game of Survivor. Then you have the big moment, of course, that most people will be talking about, which is the Jackson situation, which I would agree with well, the whole thing really was kind of odd to watch, wasn't it? I'm sure eventually more information will come out about the whole situation, but it sure seems like that uh, he was, like you said, Stacy, being very dishonest about what was going on with his medication. And it is very disappointing considering how many people are out there that could have maybe had a chance to play and he took that spot from them. But hopefully everything's going to be okay with them. And it's a shame because I really had high hopes on watching him play. As for next time on Survivor, this is not going to surprise anyone, but I've got the Blue Tribe, Ica Tribe going back to Tribal Council and probably Ruxroy or Tori, I guess, will be the one voted out. We'll, we'll have to see. And how about Drew stealing my thunder there in the uh, side challenge by tying me? Way to go, Drew. It's glad to see that, although I really kind of want to hear you sing, buddy. All right, well, anyway, that's it for me. You guys say take care. Until next time, this is Jeremiah from Southern California. Fantastic. Thanks, Jeremiah. You know, they were putting stuff on each other, and I think it was actually maybe Drea who put so much of the fake blood on, on his chest. Yeah, maybe. So, uh, she wasn't trying to sabotage him, was she? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, because she didn't want people to know about all that. But they didn't really have time to think that through, or they wouldn't have used the blood at all. Yeah, I that's think. a good point Jeremiah and uh, Rob C. were making. Mud was totally believable. Or like Jody said, nothing at all. Just say it was a really long run. Although you had yeah. said it was a tiny beach but <laughs> when they came in. Something to that effect, yeah. Anyway, thanks, Jeremiah. Next up, we got a call from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. So the premiere was not the dumpster fire that I kind of thought it was going to be based Yay. on our experiences from last year. <laughs> I didn't really get a chance to preview the cast or really look at them before the premiere, but my first looks are, are pretty good. I'm kind of liking this group. Jenny is my USB, and I used the super strategic and scientific method for choosing her in that she and I have the same name. <laughs> so there you have it. That was all the thought that I put into choosing. <laughs> However, I'm happy with my pick, and I think that she has some smarts and some social skills, yes. and she did great mm -hmm. on that initial puzzle, and she seems to be off to a good start, so I'm, I'm happy with Jenny. I'm not real fond of the three-way advantage thing that happened at the initial challenge. It just seems very complicated and just too complex for me. The immunity challenge was one of the most difficult that I can remember seeing, especially for an initial challenge, and I really enjoyed watching that. And like I said before, overall, I think this is a good cast starting out. My first impressions are that I like Jenny and I'm excited to root for her to win. I think Mary Ann is the cutest and I think I'm going to enjoy watching her play. However, she is very emotional and young and I think that that's going to be a liability for her. Being emotional, not being young. I'm looking at Paul's visual roster here and honestly, I really like everybody. Roxroy, uh, I don't know about him, his gameplay, and his interaction with his tribe mates mm, makes me a little nervous for him. I like Romeo. I like Swati. Tori bugs me a bit. I decided to try a new strategy for JSFL in picking a safe and vote off. So like I said, I chose Lindsay to be my first off. Then I just decided to guess a tribe that would be safe and then just pick everybody on that tribe as my safe picks. 
So you know where this is going, right? It was, I chose the Ica tribe was going to be safe, basically <laughs> because they were all at the bottom of the list, alphabetically there. And I, so I thought, hmm, I'm just going to pick them. And when it got to my last safe pick, I was between Romeo and Zach. And I'm like, hmm, Zach, he's surely going to be safe. So I lost a vote out point and a safe point. But anyway, I digress. Um, on to the other tribe members. I like Jonathan. Lindsay's not as bad as I thought she was going to be. Myra's great. I like Marianne. Omar's been interesting. I loved Daniel's story, and I liked how he's trying to bounce back from dislocating his shoulder. I like Hi. Lydia's interesting, and Mike's a cool guy. And finally, I was really disappointed in the elimination of Jackson and how it happened. Only 48 hours in, Jeff comes out to the island and asks him, why didn't you tell us this sooner? This seemed a little bit fake to me. After 42 seasons, I think that the Survivor Medical knows what will work and what won't out there. And you can't tell me they didn't have alternates sitting there ready to go. So I just don't know why they would do that and waste a spot when somebody else probably could have easily stepped in and played the full game. Anyway, that's it for me. I liked the first episode. Can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. Till next week. Bye. Thanks, Jen. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul in Louisiana here. And for the record, I loved the episode. For some reason, I was honestly very excited for it, and I even got more pumped up as I was watching. I ended up with a good feel for the players that were covered this week, and although there were a lot of similarities from last season, things were changed up a bit, so it didn't uh, taste like leftovers. Now, it certainly grabbed me right from the beginning, but come on, smearing yourself with blood? That was just a bit over the top, and honestly, a red flag came up for me when I just dived on into it, while Lindsay and Drea were smart enough to steer clear of it. Like Joanne Stacy, I was disappointed that we didn't get to see High explain exactly where that blood came from, because you know that's why it was there, to help someone paint themselves into a corner. In the mm. end, it was all set up and no payoff since we didn't get to hear High's explanation. You might recall that I originally planned to pick High as my USB, but then decided to go with Roxroy instead. Well, don't cry for me just yet, because on Wednesday morning, I bit the bullet and changed my USB to Lindsay. Watching her make good decisions throughout the episode while Roxroy chose poorly, well, that gave me a huge sense of relief. Now, before the show, I was very impressed with Drea, but, and I know this is based on just one episode, but Drea appears to be only a few cents short of Roxroy's ten bucks worth of unaware. She either has delusions of grandeur, or her boat was a lot lighter than the one that Jonathan and Lindsay struggled to push and pull. Because according to Drea, she did all of that heavy work herself in that challenge. Well, at least she's got no problem selling herself, huh? And how can I comment about the episode without mentioning Marianne? She's so gosh darn bubbly, and I just hope it doesn't get beaten out of her as the season progresses. We're just out of the gate here, but I think we have found the star of this season. As for my USB, Lindsay, you know, she was pretty much attached to Jonathan's hip throughout the first three days. And I mean that in a good way. She's holding her own and proving her worth while standing alongside and helping the strongest man on her tribe. On the other hand, though, I was extremely disappointed with Jackson. He screwed up his tribe in a big way, and I honestly wish they had just started without him. Allowing him to play for the little amount of time that he did only created the illusion of three equal-bodied teams. In the end, Taku ended up having the rug pulled out from underneath them. You know, I appreciate Jackson's trying, but I still have to say, shame on him. And Zach, oh my, there was so much less to him than I ever suspected. I'm sure he has hopes of returning and winning on a second season, but I'm just going to put him out of my head. Mm -hmm. Come the final episode, I'll probably be saying, oh, uh, there's that skinny guy who went out first. So what's changed for me? Well, I suspect that Tori is going to hang in there much the same way that Angelina did in David vs. Goliath. I see very distinct similarities between those two. I'll also admit that I have warmed up to Romeo, whereas Drea isn't the level-headed powerhouse that I'd hoped her to be. Roxroy, yeah, he's just filler, as well as a bullet that I dodged at the last possible moment. Also, Mike seems to be a nice enough guy, but there's just something about him that seems off. Hopefully it's because of his resemblance to Philip Shepard. All we need is to change the color of his briefs, and the illusion would be complete, <laughs> at least for me. And lastly, I suspected that Jonathan would be a powerhouse, but I had no clue how much I'd like him. He doesn't appear to be the self-absorbed egomaniac that I expected him to be. So who goes next? I have no clue, but I'm actually thinking that Drea might be pulling a Roxroy. However, she has no one to point it out to her. 
and I don't think that she'll be asking for any input when it comes to her gameplay. I think that she's well on her way to be cooking her own goose. The only thing that I'm fairly sure about is that Aiko will lose, so I'm thinking that it's going to be someone from that tribe. And I guess that's about it for me. I hope everyone enjoyed the start of the season as much as we did, and I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts now that the book has been cracked open. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Paul, I love the new symbol for no fire you put next to the Ica tribe on the roster. Uh, when they lost their flint. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, that's awesome. Because those, those little details, you know, he's already got up who's got an advantage and who's got an extra vote. And mm -hmm. even the little symbols off to the side, Ika means fish and mm -hmm. Taku means turtle and, and uh, Vadi means crab. Type and, of crab, yeah. Yeah, that was there's so great. much detail right there. And it's like if you forget, it's just go look at the roster. Yeah. It's all right there. Good stuff. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Very creative. Always enjoy that. Well, that's a lot to keep track of, too, but it's a lot easier if it's done along. And Yeah, uh, especially the way they're breaking these uh, advantages up yeah. so that they drag on and on and on. Yeah, and exactly. It'd be easy to look, uh, to, to lose track, rather, of those. Mm -hmm. I agree. The amulet advantage one. Was it Noel was saying, and I think, who else? Maybe Jen was saying, commenting, both commenting on how confusing it was, but they can actually use those. They would have to all agree to do it, but they can use it when there's three of them. They don't have to vote the other two people out to use it. Yeah. That's a special circumstance where it becomes an immunity idol if they were able to yeah, do that. Yeah, if they but all they don't, three use it, they get a... Uh, extra vote. Was it a extra vote? If there's only two of them left, when they yeah, decide yeah, to use it together, vote. it's a steal. Yeah. Yeah. And then if there were only one left, it would become an immunity idol. And the beware advantage is coming up in this next week's episode for at least one tribe, if not more. How do you know that? It's in the uh, preview for okay. the episode okay. on the press site. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and and I think that's probably why they were good with showing Tori reading that one. Yeah, well, like you said, that's been out there since the end of forty season forty one. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure they show a guy reading one. I think there's a guy's hand holding one, and I had initially thought it was Jackson. So now I'm gonna have to go back and look. Okay, not, not guess you were sure. wrong. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I knew it wasn't his voice because it didn't have that Houston accent on the guy's voice that was reading it, but I couldn't place the voice. But then I think those voices are maybe dream teamers. I don't think there are anybody in these tribes because when you hear the the, tor the one where Tori's looking at it, it doesn't sound like her voice to me either. Well, it's definitely her face. So. Oh, yeah, you can see her looking at it. Hey, we want to say a big thanks to everybody who took time to share their thoughts and predictions today. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We appreciate hearing from everyone. And we also want to give a big thanks to Remy, Christy, Erica, Hazel, and Kim for your donations. We use that to help us keep the podcast running, uh, help with our expenses. Thank you so much for that. That will help with all those new things you bought. New things, like the new interface, but it's working. I'm yes. Yes. Just... We were. Our, our equipment after 17 years was getting too old. <laughs> we were dragging and a little we bit. We had a lot of trouble at the end of last season keeping things going. Yeah. So we decided if we're going to podcast, we got to have some new stuff. Yeah. And uh, and besides, th it, this isn't a new computer, but it's newer. It's faster. And it's faster. Yeah, so much faster. So, yeah, uh, that makes it easier too. Just shaving a lot of time off on getting the episodes out, which is really that I didn't realize how much that was dragging on me. You yeah, know? how much well, all it, that extra time and well, waiting for it to hours, finish. Yeah, you know. Yep. We usually spend all day Saturday. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully anyway. we'll get some of that time back this season. And if you play in JSFL, don't forget to make your week two picks for one vote off and four safe. They need to still be in the game at the end of the episode and if to you, be safe. If you want to be a part of the listener feedback seasons uh, shows, shows this season, <laughs> you can call and leave a voicemail at 206-350-1547, toll-free 
643-8737, and you can record an audio comment and attach it or just type up a quick text for us to read into the show and send it to Joanne and Stacy show at gmail.com. Remember feedbacks due noon Pacific time on Saturdays and we ask that you keep it in the three minute range. Okay. Is there anything else about this episode we haven't talked about or you wanted to highlight or before we put this episode to bed? Uh, there are those two extra videos that you can check out. So there was actually something that wasn't shown in the episode. Just a little couple quick things i've already forgotten and we watched it just before we recorded yes one was Lindsay going on and on about how incredible jonathan was and oh, how yeah. happy she I was remember to her have day, i was thinking hmm just was kind of making eyes at him a little, a little bit of a I twinkle think. in her eye there i was like mm-hmm. and the other one was jonathan Bustin jackson when he was searching for an idol and then jonathan mary ann and omar appeared to be establishing an alliance there on day one well, they do make a pretty good couple there. Uh, as Going far back as a, to the Lindsay and Jonathan. Team, yeah. Uh-huh. Jonathan and Lindsay. They, they were both were in beast awesome. mode. They yes. were. They I, certainly made up for not having a sixth person, she was no problem. She lugging that chest just like him. She, and they were, the boat was away, and she just took off and leaped over there. She, she's definitely doing the anything you can like, do, I can do yep, thing. <laughs> yep, I can relate to that. I yeah, was I enjoyed just like her. that when I was... When I was young. I, I enjoyed her more than I expected because <laughs> of that. Yeah, I really did. I didn't. I thought she wouldn't go over well. I thought she'd be a little bossy and this and that. And uh, and I really liked her and Jonathan so much better than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. So, yep. and, uh, so I'm happy to see that. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to week two and everything that'll bring. And uh, hopefully it won't get... Uh, too more confusing although with those beware advantages here we go again get ready people are going to lose their votes now and it's going to get interesting okay well we'll be back on wednesday with our next recap have a good one